Good morning. Welcome to Maker's Interim. My name is Dan and today we're going to be looking at different ways to finish 3D prints and smooth them. One of the hardest parts of 3D printing is creating a model that is smooth and also preserves details. Um, the internet has many diverse ways of finishing a 3D print, vapor smoothing with acetone and even to boiling in water. There's a lot of different ways people suggest to clean up a 3D print. Today I'm going to explore four techniques to finish a 3D print that I found online, on YouTube, and other people's suggestions. Now the model we're using is this guy right here. This is a kind of a really rough custom airship that I made. Um, we've separated it into five distinct parts with one control part. Um, I'm, using a, I'm using this model basic stats of the model, it's printed at a 0.2 layer height with a 10% infill and an outer shell of 0.8 millimeters. This was printed on with Matter Hackers uh, 1.75 PLA at 200 degrees Celsius with a heated bed at 50 degrees Celsius using the default Cura, the default Cura settings for my Wanhao Duplicator i3+. Plus. Um, as I said, this model's, we've broken it, I've, I've tried to do everything on this model so it's in five different parts I chose this model because of the large smooth areas and also some of the littler details on the rudder and some other places and we'll go into that here in a second um, the first well the four techniques we're gonna really take a look at today is using acetone nail polish super glue and then a heat gun. Let's get started here really quick. All right, the first uh, technique we're gonna look at today is an acetone bath. Okay, and this is our control space. This is, hasn't been touched by anything. It's, and you can actually, up here can be considered, up at the top here, can be considered a control point um, in this area. You can see at uh, 0.2 millimeters, You've got all this extended ridges. You also have a bunch of ridges there, a pen just using it to highlight. What we're going to be doing is, once this is all done, we're actually going to take this model and prime it and see the difference with primer. Okay, and as you can see, it's kind of rough. Let's move it around. The reason this part isn't control is there was kind of some bleed from the heat section over, um, over near this side. So I wanted to very I wanted to separate it as much as possible from any areas. Again, really rough with the control. First one we're going to look at is the acetone bath. This section was I bathed it for 40 seconds, got it out, rinsed it with water, put it back in, I scrubbed it a little bit with some toilet paper and some paper towels, then put it back in for another 40 seconds. Um, one thing that I've removed is all the white. It became really really furry. So I cleaned that off, and that's this section here. Again, this is just acetone, not vapor smooth, not anything else, just strictly acetone finish. And you can see it's almost made, this print, it's almost made it slightly worse. You can see the ridges, you can see the outlines, a little bright light there so we can get, but you can also, it's kind of burned down and you actually start seeing a support structure underneath it. Granted, people say it should only be soaked for just, you know, 20, 30 seconds. But the first time it didn't seem to do anything. Second time it just made, it made the printing worse. Again, no vapor smoothing, just the acetone bath. Okay, now let's go back to the control. This next one was kind of a fun one. This is the nail polish side. Okay, this was four coats of nail polish. There are some spots in it where it, let's see if I can find them. Um, kind of down here in this area. It looks pretty good until it's under camera and you can see it's just kind of, it's an unsolid mess. <laughs> um, it's been, hampered, it's not uniform, 
Again, this was four coats of nail polish. Uh, let's see, where did it... I'll show you the picture with nail polish a little later. Actually, it's right here. This is the nail polish I used. It has a gel-like shine. I don't know if there's any others that are better, but that's the result I got with it. And I was very, very careful in, print, in putting this on. You can see brush strokes. You can see other issues. Again, going back. That's our control. That's the nail polish. Okay, someone also suggested online to do this with super glue. Again, let's compare it. Here's our control. And here is where I put super glue. Now, oddly enough, this was two coats of super glue. This camera is really picking out the fine details, which is great. But it's actually very smooth to the touch. I can't wait to get some primer on this part. Um, and this one was probably, with this model, one of the best finishes. It's smooth, it's flat, it is transparent, so in a way you can see, well, if we can get a shine on there, you can actually see how smooth it is. This one was really stinky. You need to do this outside. This was a lot of super glue. I guess it was kind of expensive. I just applied it and made sure that it wasn't dripping at any place and kind of just let it dry and put another coat. So that's two coats of super glue. You can actually see down here, right there, in this area, where some of the super glue coat ended and the difference. Let's see if I can maneuver this to show differences where the super glue ended and you can kind of see a difference right there again another control part back there this is at 0.2 millimeters for the control so it's rather rough but I did that on purpose if you're working with 0.15 or 0.1 you're going to get a lot better print alright the next part I did this was I've actually had, this part was, again, here's that. This part was actually with boiling water. This is going to be our H2O test. And that's this dorsal fin. And this actually did pretty good. It's smooth to the touch. There is a little bit of ribbing. It hasn't totally got rid of it. Again, with a rough print, it's not that shabby. And I just realized my fingernails need to be cleaned. Interesting. Okay. Something that the boiling water did, it... These hairs, I did notice some of the filament of these little strands did come up. They're almost invisible to the naked eye. Yeah, for it. Who cares? It's almost invisible to the naked eye. I can't really see it with my own eyes but it is definitely there on the camera all right okay the last part again going back to our control the last thing I did I've had in the past I have had a lot of success with this technique um, I actually used a heat gun on this now this model is very round <laughs> and it was probably the absolute worst for this model I'm going to show you another model here but I got different success. Because this is a large shell, it's nice and rounded, it pretty much melted the plastic in areas. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. It actually melted the plastic in these areas. It's a very rough fit. You can see pox where the plastic actually melted and dripped inside. The front's a little bit better. That's because the angle is a little steeper and there's a little bit more support touching. But this didn't go too well for me. Now, I think there's two contributing factors. This was a 10% infill throughout this. And it also was a 0.8 millimeter shell. Let me show you something different, though, with this. Okay, This is another model I, I used. I've created and I smoothed with the heat gun. At the same time I did this, same settings, exact same settings on this, except 
I put the infill at 15%. Now, this model has a huge shell, lots of surface area. Um, that burnt area right there, I kind of burnt the nail polish with heat gun. My bad. But this model is a model I created and I used a heat gun on. And if you can see, it is, there's some little imperfections down there. But other than that, it is absolutely smooth. It looks absolutely good. And I think the, the why this guy turned out so well is because using the heat gun, again, picture right there, I made sure it didn't stay in a certain point for so long. I'm going to adjust the camera now to get a better view. All right, here's this model at a little bit of different angle. And you can kind of see when I bring it closer how smooth it is. There's no lines apparent on it. And again, I didn't, I, I, when I was doing the heat gun, I would just pass the heat gun over it, just like this. About that far away, took my time, made sure I didn't get too close or too far. And I actually had, the back's the best, I had the most success with the back hair and the detail on it. Okay, let's go back to the airship real quick. Again, here's the control section. A little farther away, it doesn't, it's really not a bad print. You can kind of see some rich lines. I've really cranked up the light so you can see details. Again, it's a nail polish. Again, at this distance, we're not zoomed up with the, the magnifying glass. But it's, the nail polish looks kind of smooth. The super glue has a little bit, looking at it like this, again, super glue right here. Let's get, move that a little closer. There we go. Pretty smooth. I, I was actually really surprised by the super glue. Again, the heat area, you can really see the failure. Again, it was such a large surface, and because of that large surface area, again, I did the exact same technique, but it, it uh, for one of these round things, one of these round shells, you can see where it actually melted into the support. Okay, looking back at the the boiling water preserved the geometry. It's a little rough to the touch, but the water actually did a pretty good job. Okay, acetone. Again, just straight acetone. It's okay, let's get that shine to move around. But I think the, be the best way to describe the result with acetone is that it really made, really, if there was flaws and stuff in it, let's see if I can focus that. It really made those flaws. Now, another test I did on this, because this was such a large surface, and because it was rounded in a shell, I did the back here. I ignore that. That's dry erase marker. This area here I did with the heat gun. And again, because of the large shell, it just kind of melted in. Does not look good. Um, I'm going to go out and prime this. And we'll, I'll come back and give my final findings and exactly how I feel this went, what worked, what didn't. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, <laughs> Learned a lot. Um, I used some black primer on this to kind of show an even surface. And I discovered that don't film with black primer to show quality. So, yeah, my bad. In brief summary, acetone, no. Heat gun with large areas, no. Nail polish. Just straight nail polish, two coats, no. Um, boiling water is surprisingly a yes. Um, and super glue is surprisingly a yes. 
All right, cool. Have a good one. And oh, one more thing, since we're here with all this light. On a part that has a lot of wrinkles and folds and not many flat, long surfaces, with a heat gun, you get this, and I'd highly recommend. Now, the heat gun I'm using only gets up to 300, 400 degrees. There are some out there that gets even higher. So play it safe, use precautions, but kind of counter, counter to the airship model, a heat gun on a model like this or a figurine or a miniature like this, I've gotten my best results from. But again, if we're if you're dealing with a lot of models with large faces like this, um, you you're going to get some warping. I think increasing the infill on this guy to maybe 15 to 20 percent will help with that greatly. I think I'm going to do another video. Stay tuned. I'm going to do another video with the exact same model with about a 15 percent infill to kind of you know test this on the next one. So look up for that next uh, tomorrow. And again, this is uh, this is Dan with Makers Interim, and I hope you have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, thank you. Also, subscribe for more updates on when I release videos. In addition, since this is my first time filming, please go ahead and check out Blooper Reel. Got some funny stuff in there. Hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm.